Uh, welcome you back, and we have our opening picture from Sherry, and that is a rock climber, and she is above center left, uh, climbing up the face of this uh, vertical rock, and uh, I want you to know she does have a rope if you look carefully. She's uh, having a great time, and uh, there's uh, someone holding the rope down here at the bottom. Anyway, fun experience. I'm so glad young people uh, have the courage to do such uh, exciting things. So thank you, Sherry. And by the way, that's our youngest daughter, Amy, that's on the face of that cliff, and that is why parents pray more. So our, our presentation today has a title, Our Human and Social Constructs Impact What We Believe. The subtitle is, You Are the Superstructure Built on Christ. In other words, there is a spiritual construct, and you'll see that in, in, in a moment. So I'm going to give you some working definitions to build your frame of reference. Uh, the church is facing its greatest challenge in America right now. Uh, the issue happens to be over race, over politics, all these things that I'm going to say really don't have so much to do with God as people think. And I'm going to show you evidence of that. So here's what we have on this slide. We have what we call our presuppositions, this thing that you suppose are true. And I have a definition. A presupposition is an implicit assumption about the world or background belief relating to an utterance whose truth is taken for granted in the discourse. You just assume it's true and you're willing to uh, let it speak to you and speak to others, okay? So our human constructs are our beliefs, assumptions, preconceptions, suspicions that are unique to ourselves. These contribute to how we construct our personal lives. So presuppositions are what you get given to you by life experience from your childhood to the present and that you assume true, but human constructs are the beliefs that you have. Now let me give you a better definition. A human construct. An idea or theory containing various conceptual elements. Typically, one considers to be subjective and not always based on empirical evidence. In other words, you don't always live by the facts as much as you and I think we do. But then I want to introduce to you the spiritual construct, and this is my working definition. A spiritual construct is what God reveals of himself and creates in us that we accept and integrate by faith. This builds our character as we surrender our old constructs and presuppositions for new ones. Then there's the so what question. So what difference does it make when we create human constructs that are contrary to scripture? Now each of us has constructed a world for ourselves. Does the authority of scripture override your personal construct? Now there's going to be some things in here I know that are going to challenge you. And, and we're going to jump right in. This, uh, this slide that is on the screen is why social constructs, why do you make social constructs? Okay, so the author, Carol Brain Bainbridge wrote, why humans create uh, constructs? A social construct theory says that humans create constructs in order to make sense of the objective world, the real world. One way humans create social constructs is by structuring what they see and experience into categories. For example, they see people with different skin colors and other physical features and create the social construct of race. Now what about race? Does race exist outside of social construct? Now don't answer that right away. You need to process. You need to think about this. Would we treat people of different colors differently if we did not have the social construct of race? Now, from my perspective, if you look at the DNA of red people, yellow, black, and white, or whatever background they have, all human beings are of the same species, and there is no biological differences in them outside the genetic marker for color. Their DNA, if they are African American, if they are Native American, if they are Asian, it simply doesn't matter. They're still humans, just like you. We are humans. 
So let's go to our next one. Race is a social construct. Scientists argue racial categories are weak proxies that need to be phased out. Megan Gannon, Live Science, February 5th, 2016. Listen to what she wrote. More than a hundred years ago, American sociologist W.E.B. Du Bois was concerned that race was being used as a biological explanation for what he understood to be a social or to be social and cultural differences between different populations of people. He spoke out against the idea of white and black as discrete groups claiming that these distinctions ignored the scope of human diversity. In other words, whatever color you were did not make you less or more human. Now, today, science would favor Du Bois. Today, the mainstream belief among scientists is that race is a social construct without biological meaning. And yet, you might still open a study on genetics in a major scientific journal and find categories like white and black being used, listen carefully, as biological variables as if one color makes one more exceptional. Just let that sink in. I have a text that we will close with that I think shows what God's construct, his spiritual construct looks like. So human, social and human constructs can distort our view of God and humanity. They can distort the reality of man being created in the image of God. In other words, as you look at the variety in in the animals all over the world, there is variety in this thing called humanity. Now, they can distort the reality of man being created in the image of God by identifying some men of lesser value because of skin color. Now, God's construct moves us towards others, and the Holy Spirit creates unity among us, which means that no matter who the human being is, we see them as a fellow human being, not as a person of color that is different. God changes our worldview and how we see people as his creation. Let's get into our text. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Now we're going to go... Uh, whoops... So here it is. If anyone is in Christ, anyone, doesn't matter their skin color, he is a new creation. Old things, that would be presuppositions and human constructs, have passed away. This is the essence of the gospel at work in you. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. So God is creating a new spiritual construct through the ministry <clears throat> excuse me, of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he is downloading through the Spirit a whole new paradigm, a whole new model of what it means to be a son and daughter of God. Now think about how this impacts your human constructs. Now we're going to spend some time in a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. This is 1 Corinthians 3, and I'm going to work all the way through this uh, passage. So this is 9 and 10. Subtitle here, this is on the opening slide, You are God's superstructure. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. Did you catch that? That means that's something that God is building in your character, in your life. Verse 10, according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. Now, you're God's construction project. Have you thought about the influence of spiritual teachers as either major contributors or contributing fluff? In other words, when you integrate these thoughts and ideas from other teachers, are you processing the content? Notice 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 12. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Paul's theology is, 
everything is built on Christ, all of it, as a spiritual construct. Now, pay attention to verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, let's pause here for a moment. Anyone are the other teachers. You know, uh, Paul's dealing with a problem in the church where people say, well, I follow after the teachings of Paulus. And the other one says, I follow after Paul. I mean, how often do we hear this in our own Christian community? So-and-so and so-and-so uh, in lightness. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that we have these different impacts of different teachings. So Paul is clarifying them as gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw. So I brought a quote from Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown, and I'm going to share it with you. This is what they had to say about wood, hay, and straw. Paul is warning of a subsequent teaching that came after he left. Not that they taught what was false, but their teaching was subtle and speculative rather than solid and simple. But the gold, silver, precious stones, which all can bear fire, are teachings that will stand the test of judgment. Wood, hay, stubble are, they wrote, but the teachings mixed with human philosophy and Judaism curious rather than useful. Now we're going to go to verse 13. Each one's work, that's the work we've taken in by faith, will become clear for the day, capital D-A-Y, in that day, the trial that comes by fire, in that day we'll declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he'll receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, that's the wood, hay, and straw that is flammable, he will suffer loss. All that fluff will go away. But he or she will be saved yet so as through the trial. In other words, that stuff you put in that is just maybe speculation, just maybe really interesting but not relevant, all of that is going to, in the trial of life or in the day, is going to be sorted out from what's absolutely essential. So what are you building? And here Paul's addressing it. And here we go to verse 16, and I want you to pay careful attention. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit dwells in you? Remember, I said you're God's superstructure? That you are God's building? Now Paul's going to explain that. Verse 17, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? Or which temple you are? I apologize. Which temple you are? You are his temple that he is building. So my note says this is a serious condition. The temple is God's construct. That's you. What teachings, philosophies, and theories weaken the newness of what is being constructed in you? Are you paying attention? Are you going back to the Word and saying this is, this is from the Word of God or is this just something they imagine to be the case? You are entirely His temple. God's temple. You are entirely God's construct, His construct. What you put in the temple yourself can make it less than God's and more of you. Now, this verse reveals God's spiritual construct. It denies us using race, gender, or economic status as a social or human construct to label others. And here it is in Galatians 3, 26 through 29. Notice what God has to say about this. You are all the sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Verse 28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. Ethnicity no longer is relevant. There is neither slave nor free Economic status is no longer significant. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Gender is, in God's spiritual construct, irrelevant. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
So here God comes along. It's so relevant today because there's so much going on within the Christian church at large about race, the color of skin, and I'm going to just challenge you, if you are the superstructure of God, didn't the scripture just tell us that we can't look at ethnicity, that we can't look at economic status, that we can't look at gender if we are in Christ? This would agree with the social scientist that says, hey, wait a minute. We can't use ethnicity, we can't use color to determine because we are all the sons and daughters of God. We're all the children of Adam moving towards being in Christ. So it's that time of year. We're uh, into March. And so here's the dogwood that's in bloom. Uh, Sherry took these pictures also up in Spokane. The buds of the dogwood are, are just filling up and just ready to burst open. Absolutely, that tree was so full of blossoms. It was so beautiful. So I just want to thank Sherry again for her work for us. Uh, it's such a blessing. So thank you, Sherry. Blessings. We'll have another exciting presentation coming up for you. Take care now.